Hi, welcome back to our subject natin, Principles of Steel Design. And for today, we will discuss shear lag and slenderness of tension members. Outline of this lecture are as follows. We will tackle the concept of shear lag, uh, what are the different uh, cases to identify for the value of shear lag factor, and what is the slender limit for tension members. So outcome for this lecture, is to discuss the concept of shear lag and its factor and to determine how shear lag factor is applied to connected tension members, okay? But before we uh, discuss the concept of shear lag, we need to go back with what we have already discussed uh, prior to this lecture, which is the tensile strength of tension members. So we already discussed two strength limit state of tension members, which are tension yielding in the gross section and tensile rupture in the net section. So these two are deferred from the National Structural Code of the Philippines 2015, section 504.2, item one and item two. So for tension yielding, um, we don't have a problem in calculating for the capacity based from this strength limit state. Because uh, as we can see in the formula, to get the capacity, we just need the value of the yield stress, which is already given depending on the type of uh, steel we are using, and the gross area. So the gross area may depend whether we are using a plate, so it will just be the multiplication of the width times thickness of the plate, or the gross area of the steel section based from the construction manual. So, we can easily calculate the capacity based from yielding. Our problem now is to in is the calculation of the capacity based on the rupture of the net section. So, from the previous lecture, we already um, discussed how to identify the value of the net area. And as we can see here on this formula, to get the capacity, we need the ultimate stress, which is already uh, given based from the type of steel material we are using and another factor which is called the effective net area. Uh, so far, we, we did not yet um, discuss effective net area and according to our previous lecture, AE is equal to U times AN where AN we already know that because we discussed uh, uh, the two type of bolt connection, uh, the parallel type or grid type connection and then staggered connection wherein we considered the effects of the uh, stagger or the path. Okay, So right now, before we can use this formula, we need to understand what is this U? What is this factor that we need to multiply to our net area to call it as the effective net area? And that is what we are we will try to find out, okay? So to understand or to know what is the value of you, we need to understand the concept of shear lag. And as mentioned here in connections, more or less, uh, not, uh, not always the elements of a structural member are all connected to another component. Um, as you can see here, we have an example of an L shape and a double a C shape section, wherein part or just one part of the element is connected. Here, one leg is connected, and here just the webs, uh, the web are connected. Okay, so uh, this has an effect on our forces or the distribution of forces in our material or in our steel section and the code um recognizes this okay so limbawa meron tayo naka-apply ditong load na p you know so when the load is applied at this point or at this direction uh so sempre si material will tend to resist that action or resist that force okay and as you can see here kung isa lang yung naka yung kung itong portion lang na to yung naka connection or yung may connection sa another member okay yung forces natin are redistributed 
dito sa connection natin. So, it is only concentrated wherein kung saan meron siyang resistance or greater resistance for that matter. Okay? Kasi ito yung main uh, main components na nagre-resist talaga nung, nung pag, uh, pag-break o pag-collapse nung, nung mismong tension member natin from its connection dun sa uh, let's say sa, sa, sa column or sa beam kung, depende kung saan siya nakakonect. Okay? So, there is a part of the member that is not working. Okay? So, as you can see by these lines, makikita mo na yung uh, forces are redistributed dito sa areas na to. And the code recognizes this phenomena. Okay? So, if if this happens, ibig sabihin, yung calculated net area natin should be smaller pa or it should be reduced further to account for this effect. So, as you can see also here, makikita nyo, yung web lang yung nakakonect dun sa C-shape natin. As you can see, the shaded portion are unstressed or understressed area. Meaning, it is not getting the same stress as, this, as those elements or parts that is connected, that is directly um resisting the load okay so uh we can actually uh, it, it is possible to calculate that mathematically or by a software using finite element analysis but it would be very tedious to do that that's why the code says we need to simplify this um this condition so that practic uh, practitioners can easily uh, adapt the most uh, accurate or most effective net area to consider for the rupture uh, limit state. Okay? That is why nagka meron ng shear lag factor na tinatawag. Okay? So, dahil non-uniform nga yung stress, there is a reduced efficiency ng net section natin. That is why, to account for that phenomena, we need to multiply. Okay? Again, yung formula natin is U times AN. We need to reduce the value of our net section or net area due to the uh, effect of uh, this connection wherein uh, not all parts or not uh, not all element of this section are connected to another uh, steel structure. Okay? And the code has a table for that. Uh, NSCP 2015 7th edition has a table um, 504.3.1 which is also the same as the table from the construction manual table D3.1. Okay? So as you can see here. So, we have eight cases actually to consider or eight um, scenarios that we should account depending on the connection that we are given. Okay, So, we need to discuss one by one for us to understand what factor is applicable in our connection. Because uh, in cases that we are using the shear lag factor, it is possible that we we will fall under uh, more than one case. And for that, uh, we need to um, read the citation stated on the code to understand how we will select the value of U that we will use for our equation. Okay, So let us first start with case number one. Case number one, it says that all tension members where the tension load is transmitted directly to each of the cross-sectional elements. So this is the keyword here. The each of the cross-sectional element by fasteners or welds. It means that if our or or the whole part of our uh, member is connected, let's say for example an angle, uh, an L shape, both legs have uh, balls on it. It means it falls under case one. So meaning, 
these two examples earlier, we have an L shape wherein only one of the legs are connected. It means it doesn't fall on case one. The same with this one. We can see that the webs are connected, but the flanges are not. So it will not fall under case one. Okay? To fall uh, in case one should have a connection here. Or let's say there is another plate on this side. Then let's say uh, it is welded okay? yes, for some areas or even bolted if it's possible. Uh, if that is the case and all of the uh, both flanges have connections also on each side, then it is possible or it is uh, can be categorized at case one. But for our case on this example, these two are not on case one because not all of the elements are connected to another member. Okay. And if it is the case that each of the cross-sectional element is indeed connected, we will use the value of u is equals to 1.0. 1.0 because it means that the um, tension member is um, resisting the force as a unit, as 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 a um, as a composite uh, structure, meaning uh, all of the forces are being resisted by the whole section. That is why it's 1.0, okay? When, when we do not uh, qualify for case one, automatic, we qualify for case two, except plates and HSS, okay? So case two says all tension members, except plates and HSS, where the tension load is transmitted to some, okay? So it's specified that sum only, okay? Meaning um, if the uh, connection is uh, installed at the web only of the C shape, then it falls under case two, okay? Or uh, let's say for an L shape, uh, only the longer leg is connected to another member, then it falls under case two. And for case two, we have a formula that we will discuss a little further later, okay? But we will uh, uh, discuss this uh, in detail on the next slide, okay? So it means whenever we do not qualify for case one, we always qualify for case two because um, for sure, some of the elements of the tension member will be connected to the uh, main system, okay? For number three and number four, uh, if you read it uh, all throughout, it, it specify connections that are uh, welded, okay? So for three and four, we will not, uh, consider this for bolted connection. So automatic, this is for on, uh, this is applicable only for welded connections only. Okay? And whenever uh, a welded connection arises, you will just um, follow the shear lock equation stated here. Okay? And for number five and number six, this rule or case is for HSS or hollow steel sections. And more or less, um, for our example later, we will not use HSS, okay? For W, M, S, or HP, okay, whenever we have an I section, we, we, we should use number seven together with its sub uh, cases. So we need to classify whether it will fall under here and then we will use this equation or if it will fall under here and then we will use this equation. Okay, and lastly, we have number eight for angles, okay? If our connection are angles and then it uh, it has uh, two sub cases, 
with four or more fasteners per line, we will use this value. Then for three fasteners per line, we will use this value. Okay. So depending on the uh, connection that the problem has, we should identify which case or cases we will use as um, as a reference for the calculation of the value of u that we will use to identify our effective net area. Okay, so let us focus more on case one and case two. So as mentioned for case one, so this is a paraphrased version of the uh, one stated in the code. If the load is transmitted to all, so uh, it's it's very emphasized here that it should be uh, the uh, steel section should be connected on all its element. Meaning if we have an L shape, both legs should be connected. If we have C shape, both the flanges and the web should be connected. Okay. And for case two, if the load is transmitted to some, we will use this formula. So this formula is somehow um somehow different from the uh the one uh stated on the table but we just have a subscript for this uh, for us to have a more understanding on what is the meaning of that um symbol or notation okay and there's a note here na sabi niya tension member tends to fall under case either case 1 or case 2 okay dal sabi ka na natin once na, na hindi na siya pumasa ng case 1 automatic case 2 na siya okay and then, may statement di dito, multiple cases may also be applied to a given connection. So later, emphasize natin yan kung paano yan gumagana dun sa problem natin. But first, we need to understand the components ng formula for case 2. Yung subscript natin dito indicates that this uh, shear lock factor is based from case 2. Okay? So 1 minus bar x con over L con or connection eccentricity, eccentricity and connection length. So we discuss first connection eccentricity. So as defined, connection eccentricity is the distance from the connected phase to the center of the member in question. Okay. So we have here four figures uh, for as reference. So kailangan niya is the connected phase. Ibig sabihin kung saan may connection kung saan may bolt, saan may weld. Yun yung connected phase. Papunta doon sa centroid nung member natin. For an L-shaped section, okay, yung centroid niya is here. Okay? Somewhere doon. And kung ito yung ating bolts, ibig sabihin ito yung ating connection side or connected side. Okay? So, makikita nyo, uh, ito yung assumption nating ano niya, centroid niya. And then, ito yung ating connected part. Okay? Ang sabi niya, from the connected part, papunta doon sa centroid niya, okay? yun yung bar X natin. Bar X ko natin. Yun yung bar X ko natin. So, how you will identify yung, uh, yung mismong uh, centroid ng shape natin? We need to look at the construction manual. Okay? So, here is the an example or a snippet of the manual, AASC. Okay? So, for L-shape, for example, we have here the, the, the figure for angle, so table 1-7 of the code. So, we have here an L-shape. And as you can see, we can identify the centroid of the member where uh, if we locate the intersection of the x and y axis. This is the x axis. This is the y axis. So, ito yung kanyang centroid, ibig sabihin. Okay? And yung centroid na yun, may values yung distances niya. Kapag ito yung connected part natin, then ito yung centroid natin, mapapansin nyo, may nakalagay, yung location, yung distance na yun is bar x. Okay? Pag yung, ito yung connected section na part natin, tapos ito yung ating centroid, makikita natin yung distance nito as bar y. Okay? 
as a note please do not use again please do not use xprypp for now because this will be used um for bending or uh, once we go sa uh, sa beams but for now please don't use please be careful of not using uh, please be careful of using XPNYP. Do not use XPNYP. Okay? Ang values natin should be bar X and bar Y. And what is the case for angle bars? For angle bars or for L-shaped uh, sections, we have equal and unequal legs. For equal legs, okay, uh, meaning same yung width ng legs niya, both bar Y and bar X are the same values. Okay? So as you can see here, uh, this is bar Y. We can see it is 2.4 inches. When we check for bar X on the right side of the table, bar X is also 2.4 because the legs are the same. But when you check the legs, uh, the value of the centroid for unequal legs, it should not be the same. So here, bar X is 1.65. But, and, but bar Y is 2.65. So we need to be careful in identifying which side is connected. If this side is connected, okay, so we should know that we need the value of bar Y. If this side is connected, we should know the value of this. Okay. So to identify for unequal legs, um, this side is for the longer side okay and this side is for the shorter side so when you have l8 by 6 meaning this is the eighth side or the you uh, the leg with an eight inches width and this is the leg with a six inches width okay okay so there so that is our connection eccentricity as you can see here for c channel or for C-shape, that is also the case. Uh, this is the connected part. And somewhere here is our centroid. So the connected part will be that portion. Okay. And then we have a special case for connection eccentricity. That is for W section connected by the flanges. Okay. If it's connected... Uh, at, uh, by the flanges, uh, the code says that we need to convert it to an equivalent WT section to determine X con. Why? Because when we consider the whole section as I, where do you think is the centroid? The centroid is in the center because of symmetry. Okay, and uh, that this is uh, this is not the uh, the case or the consideration of the code. The code considers that when we have this type of connection, uh, it is assumed that uh, the resistance nung section natin is na half siya. Ibig sabihin, nahati yung, kumbaga yung, yung um, mag-resist nung forces natin is yung half is sa taas, yung other half ay sa baba. Kaya ang gagawin, kukunin natin equivalent WT section, meaning, let's say for example, we have a W12 by 30. So to get yung WT section niya, we just need to divide it by 2 to have the WT section or the half or the sectional T section niya, which is 6 by 15. Wherein, pag tinignan natin yung diagram for WT shape, we can see that the centroid now is different. Okay? So the location of the centroid will be at this point. And then if this is our connected phase, this distance will be our x con. Okay? So your guide for the value that you need will be based from the figure on the table on the construction manual. So you need to be very careful with that. Okay? And then next we have uh, connection length. For connection length, uh, this is very straightforward. For bolted connection, it is the measure of the center of the bolt at one end to the center of the bolt at the other end. So, ibig sabihin, yung dulo sa dulo na bolt, kukunin mo lang yung distansya niya ng center to center. For parallel type connection, uh, we have here the, the last bolt and the last bolt. So, yun yung ating uh, L-con agad. 
for staggered, yung magkabilang dulo, okay? Yun yung elko natin. If it would happen na mayroon pang isa dito, it means na ang elko natin would be this one. Ah, sorry. This one. Okay? Because that is the farthest bolt from each other. Okay? For welded connection, uh, we should uh, consider the weld parallel to our loading. Okay? So, if our load is this direction, the, weld, the length of the weld that we need is this one. Okay? So, we just need to measure or to know the the length of this weld. And there are some cases that the sides of the member does not have the same length of weld. So, we will discuss this later when we go to connections. But for now, if we see a connection like this, we just need to get the average of those lengths and then that will be our connection length. Okay? Okay, so before we solve an example, uh, we will just tackle first the slenderness, slenderness limit. So slenderness limit is our first um, serviceability limit state for tension member. Okay, and as per NACP 2015, section 504.1, there is no maximum slenderness limit for members in tension. Pero meron, sang, meron siyang suggestion. Ang suggestion niya, for members designed on tension, the slenderness ratio, LR, L over R, preferably should not exceed 300. So, why? Bakit nagka meron siya ng suggestion ng gano'n? Because the code recognized that uh, we need to set a limit para dun sa halimbawa sa length na pwede na tension member natin. Kasi pwede natin siyang ma-prevent yung halimbawa. Yan. Pag sobrang haba nung section natin, anong pwedeng mangyari? Okay? So, mahirap siyang uh, kargahin pag sobrang haba. And then, pwede siyang pag nililift siya ng crane, okay? pag sobrang haba, may tendency siyang mag-deflect. Okay? Magka meron ng sag. Madamage during shipping. So, yung kung mas mahaba din siya yung self weight niya is much greater that will tend the section to deflect due to its own weight kaya sabi ni code suggestion niya to prevent these scenarios we need to have a value of slenderness ratio or l over r at least less than or equal to 300 but this is just a suggestion this is not a a um requirement Okay. So meaning, um, as an engineer, uh, if your value of L over R is exceeds a little uh, on the boundary of 300, let's say you have a 301 or 300.5 slenderness ratio, um, it is uh, your judgment to accept or to, to still use that um, section because this is just a suggestion by the code, okay? And to check for slenderness, we just need to find the value of L over R. L is the member's length. So for our case, this will be in mm. And R is the radius of gyration. And radius of gyration is given by the formula square root of I over A, where I is our moment of inertia. Okay. And A is our area. Okay. So uh, if we will be using the construction manual, uh, we don't need to calculate this manually anymore. We have a value of R on the table. And for us, uh, for our case, for tension members, we need to select the minimum R. Okay. So meaning if the section has two or three or two or more values of R based from the X, Y, or Z axis, we just need to select whichever is lesser or the least value among the two or three values of R based from the their respective axis. Okay? So, okay, so let's start with our first example. Okay? 
determine the U value for the shape shown. And next question, does the channel meet suggested slenderness limit? If it is, so I will change this one and change it to five meters only. Uh, this is a typo, okay? So we have a C10 by 30, okay? So you can see C10 by 30, and then we have a grid type connection, okay? And as we can see, or upon observing, we can see that only the web part is connected, meaning if we, we, we will identify the value of few values, we will need to indicate what cases are possible in our condition. Okay? So, uh, we will go back on our list of cases. So, case one is automatic, will not be considered because only the web section or the web element, web part is considered. So, automatically we are qualified for case two. Okay? For case two. So, next, identify natin yung uh, iba pang case applicable. So, See, si case 3 and 4 are not because it's for welded connection. See, si 5 and 6 is for an HSS connection. So, hindi yan pwede. Si se number 7 is for WM and S and HP section for I sections natin. So, hindi pwede. And 8 is for angles. Therefore, our conclusion, the, the applicable case for C-shape section is case number 2 only. So number two only. And with that, we have the U value U2 is equals to one minus X bar con all over L con. Okay. So we need to identify X con and L con. So I think it's more faster if we identify L con. Again, for connection length, we just need to get the distance from the um, uh, ex extreme most location or extreme most bolts and what is their center to center distance for this case this is this location and this location okay this is our alcon so that's, that will be 75 plus 75 plus 75 that is 225 this is in mm okay then for L, uh, X cone, so this is our connected phase. Okay, let me just identify this connected phase. And this is our uh, centroid, assume, assuming, okay, this is our centroid. So this will be our X cone. So we need to check our value for C shapes, okay. So going to the construction manual table, table 1-5, we see that this is our C section. And um, when we look at the X and Y axis, this is the Y axis, this is the X axis. So this is the location of the centroid of the section. And this is our connected part. Okay, so that distance corresponds to bar X. So we need bar X. So we just need to find the the designation of our shape and then look for the value on this table okay so okay so let's look our shape again is c10 by 30 okay so c10 by 30 is somewhere here uh 15 50 12 30 c10 by 30 okay so the entries below nito okay Ibig sabihin nga, this is C10 by 25, C10 by 20, C10 by 15.3. So, um, di na lang nilagay ni code para hindi masyadong crowded yung um, text. Okay? So, we have C10 by 30 and we need bar X. So, for this part, we don't have bar X. So, we proceed on the other side. So, this is the location of C10 by 30. Then we need bar X. Bar X is there. Okay. So bar X is here. This is our shape. So we just need to get the intersection of this. So we have a value of 0.649 inch for our um, bar X or X con. 
Okay, so let's write that 0 0.649. 0 0.649 inch. But we are using mm. So for our case, uh, let us use as a simplification, the conversion 1 inch is equal to 25 mm. Okay, so multiply this by 25 mm per inch to have the inch the mm value for x con that is 0 0.649 times 25. We have 16.225 mm. Okay, so u2 now will be equal to 1 minus. 16.225 mm all over the value of Alcon, which is 225 mm. Okay, cancel out the unit. We have 1 minus 16.225 all over 225. That is 0.928. Okay, and this will be our answer for this problem. Okay, so as you can see, the value is less than 1, meaning um, the net area needs to be reduced. Okay, next question, does the channel meet suggested slenderness limit of 5 meters long? So maybe let's um, postpone this one uh, and then let's go back here after we solve the next problem. Um, balikan natin after. Okay. So, solve lang muna natin yung isa pa para sa U values. Uh, I have this shape. We have an L8 by 8 by 5 eighths. And then, this is its connection. We have a staggered connection with a spacing of 50 mm typical. Okay. So, typical, it means every spaces that we have for each bolt is 50 mm apart. So, we need to identify the cases applicable. Okay. Uh, cases. Okay. So, since one leg is connected, meaning case one is not applicable. So, therefore, case two is already uh, one of the choices as possible cases for our shear leg factor calculation. Okay. Next. We look at the table again. 3 and 4 for welded, 5 and 6 for HSS, number 7 for eye shapes, then number 8 for single and double angles. So we need to use this one because it satisfies our uh, connection. Then we need to read the, uh, the citation mentioned on its subcases. Okay, so, okay, so let me paste it here. And then let's just put here that case 8 is also a possible uh, case to consider, okay? So it means we need to calculate both value for case number 2 and case number 8. Let us first do case number 8. For case number 8, it says that single and double angles... And then it has two subcases. First, with four or more fasteners per line. What does per line mean? Uh, you will look at the loading, okay? And then, tingnan niyo yung parallel na load. You look at the bolt, uh, rather, okay? So, yung per line is the line, uh, yung itong line na to, per bolt. So, this is the first line of bolts, second line of bolts. So that is the per line. So you need to count how many bolts are there per line in the direction of the loading. Okay, This is for four or more. And this, this is for three. If it is four or more, you will use U is equals 0.8. But if it's three fasteners, you will use 0.6. Then if it's less than six, uh, the, there is a note here. With fewer than three fasteners per line, the direction of loading, use case two only. Okay? But uh, for our case, we have one, two, and three. Three fasteners or three balls. So we will be using 0.6. Okay? So we can write U8 is equal to 0 0.6. Okay? 
And then there is a note here. If u is calculated as per case 2, okay, which we will do later, the larger value is permitted to be used. Meaning, we need to compare the value of u8 that we have uh, identified and the one we will calculate. Whichever is greater, that is the one that will govern with our um, with our u value. Okay, so we have now uh, for case 8. So for case 2, again, the formula is 1 minus bar x con over l con. So we need to identify l con. So uh, extreme volts, just need to locate it. So this is it and this one. So this distance will be our l con. So that is 50, 100, 150. Us. 50, 100, 50, 200, 250. Okay, so we have 250 mn as our L con. Next, our connected part is this one. Okay, connected phase. Okay, and we need the value of the centroid, and that value is our x con. Okay, and our section is an L8 by 8 by 5 eighths. So let's look at that. L8 by 8, then 5 eighths. So that's it. Okay, and since this is a, an equal angle, we will look at either bar Y and bar X because it's the same value. So if we check bar Y for 5 eighths, this is the value 2.21. Okay, and here, for 5 eighths and bar x, that is 2.21 inches. Okay, so let's write that. This is 2.21 inch. Okay, so convert it to mm. We have 2.21 times 25, that is 55.25 mm. Okay. Now we can calculate U2. U2 will be 1 minus 55.25 mm all over 250 mm. Cancel out the units. We have U2 is equal to 1 minus 55.25 divided by 250. That is 0 0.779. Okay. And upon... Again, reiterating the condition stated here, if U is calculated as per case 2, whichever is larger between the two will be selected. So 0.779 is larger than 0.6. Therefore, this will be our answer. Okay. So it means possible talaga magkamero ng more than one case on one type of connection. So depending on the connection, um, there will be possible. Uh, there will be more than one value of you that you need to calculate and consider. Okay? And before we end, let's go back here. Uh, we need to check for the slenderness limit if the length is equal to 5 meters long. Um, it says that we have a length of 5 meters. We need to satisfy L over R should be less than or equal to 300. So we have the value for L, that which is 5,000. Uh, 5 meters in millimeters, that is 5,000 millimeters. So which value of R do we need? Okay. So to do that, uh, to identify that, we need R minimum. Okay. And we have a C shape. So we look at the C shape. Okay. And for C shape, need to uh, look at the value of R. So here we have two values for each axis. We have R for XX and R for YY. Okay. So need to identify which one is lesser. Okay. So 
this is the uh, for y y and for x x okay between 0 0.668 and 3.43 0 0.668 is lesser so ito yung gagamitin nating r okay so 0 0.668 so that is in inches so we need to convert 25 mm per inch cancel this out cancel this out we have 5000 divided by 0 0.668 times 25 so that is 299.4 less than 300 then in this sign we say this is okay okay so if that's the case it means that the section meets slenderness criteria okay meaning it passes the criteria for slenderness okay if every uh, the value will be greater than 300 okay so we says we say that it is ng no good or not good so if that's the case we need to do something about our tension member um, and one of the solution kapag ganun yung nangyayari na bumabagsak sa slenderness is we introduce secondary members okay halimbawa um, let's say that tension member is um, for as a purlin halimbawa ano so what do you see sa purlin pag sobrang haba nilalagyan siya ng sagrads dito support para yung consideration ng length is ma half siya ito na yung magiging l natin okay kaya nagkakamero ng sagrads or kailangan i-consider yung sagrad or um, kung sa beam later no kaya nagkakamero ng mga Inti intermediate beam between uh, girders okay uh, that is to control or to help dun sa lateral stability of our section that's why ayan okay and as you can see here again our value is very near dun sa 300 so if your value is around 300.5 let's say it it um uh it become larger by a small amount by 300. So as an engineer, you have a judgment to do. And since this requirement is just a suggestion by the code, so you don't need to be very strict about it. But um, for safety purposes, we need to reinforce it. Okay, because um, the code knows that this will help in uh, the performance of the member. Okay. Okay, so that's it. That is the use of our uh, shear lag factor and slenderness. So with that, that ends our lecture for today. Um, next lecture, we will now be able to analyze our member and determine the capacity needed for each member because we now know how to calculate for the tension rupture of the net section okay so i hope you like this video thank you for listening and see you on the next lecture